Hi listeners, Ram Big Thighs here. What's that? You've never heard my voice before? Well, you could hear plenty more from me and my friends if you subscribe to the Goblins and Growlers Patreon at patreon.com slash goblins growlers. Uh, we just lost Brandon. We did indeed. The internet went out. Try to continue without me while I fix it. Okay. I mean, this one-on-one scene doesn't really need Brandon, but, you know. The timing was weirdly good for that, yes. So I just imagine Bo, like, standing in the corner of every scene, just kind of staring. <laughs> just staring this, this in is, the middle distance. <laughs> this is really, breathing heavily. Yeah, <laughs> this is really breaking my immersion, not having him here right now. This is Quid Pro Roll, a fantasy live play adventure where a party of unlikely heroes embark on a quest to bring dragons back to their world. Well, howdy, listeners. Welcome to the Daily Crier Listening Show, where all the news and varying and beyond can make its way will write to you. So last time, the party ventured away from town, Spritz and Cole in tow, and had some pretty long discussions about how Spritz got the wizardly skill to enact such crimes, and where that teacher lived. Uh, as well as Cole making a case for joining the party on coming adventures. Johannes channels his divine dragon powers into vomiting up a small plague of frogs, uh, believing that might help summon the Dark Wizard. And Solinar takes Cole hunting to soften the sting of his denied request. Though, as the party prepared for camp, setting up a fire and shelter, Something ominous and vague peaked Johannes' divine radar. And as the group drifted off to sleep, Solinar drifted off somewhere else. Now, listeners, remember to let your pies cool for two to four hours before slicing them up. <laughs> and don't just eat the filling. It's the journey that helps make the pies so darn tasty. And as always, y'all take care now. So you all had traveled out from the town and settled down for a break. Not much had happened other than you attempting to create a plague of frogs to summon the wizard's tower, which is definitely a sentence. And upon waiting for that, you went to take a rest. The one who didn't get rest, however, was Solinar, who awakened to find himself in this strange dreamscape with a familiar figure standing at the precipice. Before we get too deep into that, I, just real quick, um, mm -hmm. I, I feel like it's really important that I oh. establish uh, for Kosa getting some rest. <laughs> he snores like Pegasus from the Hercules animated movie. <laughs> Anyway, back, back, back to the Solnar. Frogs, the frogs dispersed after a long rest because they would be hopping in your mouth. <laughs> well, you know, it's your world. You could... <laughs> it, would, it would suck to wake up with a frog in your throat. Oh. Ha ha! Yeah, Koza, like, wakes up from a nightmare. Um, well, it was actually like the frog was literally in his throat. Um, but that was like the exact same moment that it dispersed from the long rest. Um, that would be haunting. Yeah. So Koza <laughs> has to live with that now. <laughs> I d don't know if I should make you roll for trauma, but... <laughs> Your world. <laughs> roll, yeah. roll, roll trauma, and then after you're done with that, you're going to want to roll a constitution saving throw against throwing up. Ugh. Dreamscape. <laughs> Solinar. Standing with a stick, ready to whop this figure right in the face. 
or back of the head. When she turns, looks at you. Were you really going to hit me with that stick? Oh, hey, Astrid. Uh, no, I, so your, your silhouette seemed kind of familiar, but I didn't know what kind of familiar. And I woke up unarmed, which is always a bad sign. So this is a weird hit on. What? Okay, I continue. Uh, so I wanted to make sure I armed myself. This place is kind of familiar. Kind of, kind of fey vibes. Definitely fey vibes. I don't understand it. To be honest, I'm not even sure how I'm here, but there's something powerfully magical nearby. I'm able to, I guess, uh, half manifest somehow. Well, you're, you're manifesting here, wherever here is. Uh, your mind, I believe. This is what my mind looks like? Well, after I cleaned it up. The ultimate weapon! You cleaned up my mind? <laughs> the ultimate weapon. Solinar's mind. Wait, you cleaned up my mind? No, no I sort of... So I found out that I could manifest in a dream uh, when the whole weird magic thing that's approaching ominously came by. Uh, so I just sort of made like a little knock so I could be here. I'm not able to fully manifest, but I could do something. And to be perfectly honest, I could use a break from being in the rock. That's fair. I actually... I was a little disappointed when we left Baba Yaga's hut that you weren't able to manifest anymore inside the woods. You were only able to manifest there. Because, like, I kept thinking about there's there's this stuff. Because you were part of the, the previous party that attempted this adventure, right? Uh, yes, that is how I died. Yeah, it's so, like, you all would have better knowledge about, like, Emberlyn, for instance. I like what her weaknesses are. I mean, if that knowledge would have truly helped us, I don't think we would have died. Well, my understanding is you all were completely separate, and that one of your party members had betrayed the rest at the point that Emberlin started picking you off one by one, like, well, shooting fish. Oh, thank you. That's a very wonderful way to twist the knife. Are you sure you don't want to just knock me out with a stick? It might be less painful. I... My point is, you may have had lots of information that would be incredibly helpful, and she still could have gotten you with the strategic advantage, which it sounded like she had. Well, I mean, fortunately, as somebody who used to be her ally, I probably have a little bit more knowledge on her than most. Oh, yeah. What do you mean, oh, yeah? Well, I'd kind of forgotten about the fact that you ever worked with her. How did you know I worked with her? What the, we saw a vision. You all were at a How bar. How much of my history have you seen through eyes that are not mine? Well, Hit her with this... the stick. Hit her with the stick. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's this lady named Artemis, and she keeps giving us visions of the past. Okay, okay. If Artemis did it, I'm generally a little bit less stressed about it. And you all were at a tavern, and... Uh, yes, I remember the whole tavern thing. One of the people was talking about, like, not trusting you, and another was, was talking about you having just saved someone's life. That was and, Aaron. And, I don't know, the rest is kind of hazy. A lot has happened since we saw that vision. It, yes, and a lot has happened to me since I experienced it. My understanding was it's been a couple hundred years, and I spent most of that time dead. Seems or, boring. Entombed in a rock. I'd still, like, that. that seems like a... Pretty dull way to have to spend time, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's that's probably why I manifest at every opportunity, including in your brain meat. I hope this isn't having some kind of terrible side effect for my brain meat. Eh, who knows? Well, only live once. Well, oh, and <laughs> apparently not, if I am any indication. <laughs> live, laugh, lobotomy. <laughs> Reduce, reuse, reanimate. Uh, so you're telling me you don't have any sort of information about how one might stab an Emberlin really good? Well, my understanding is a knife will probably do the trick. She is mortal, just like anybody else. Is she? No, my she is. My understanding is 300 years ago, she was causing problems for y'all. We were able to find out that 
the reason Emberlyn is the way she is, I did not know it would lead to the lifespan she has, but she's linked to her dragon in some kind of weird, supernatural way. All right, so your suggestion for how best to stab Emberlyn is to kill a large black dragon. Yes, I am. I don't know that I like this plan. Look, here's the thing. I'm not sure if this is a chicken or the egg situation, or a break egg for omelette situation, or whatever the strange idiom is. One of them is connected to the other. So, in order to destroy one of them, the other has to be destroyed. I'm not super duper sure how it works, but it's something. Bernard was able to figure out that it's some kind of combination magic. It's not inherently, it's inherently draconic, but not exclusively. Is this like a lich situation? Like, we stab her, but like, because Cheyenne's still alive, she comes back little bits and pieces at a time, but near Cheyenne, and then I'm we have to go sure. to Cheyenne and destroy him. I'm not sure it's quite that extreme, but it could be. Look, the thing that is notable is that Emberlyn has always been up to something. And, well, she succeeded in the first thing, so there is not much to do other than you guys finding out what we could not, which is how to stop her. My first recommendation is do not split your party up into multiple spaces uh, so that they can be picked off one by one. I do not have an immense amount of faith in your halfling friend to not die like Van did. Honestly, I, I think each of us individually probably would have a bad time fighting Emberlyn and a bunch of chromatic dragons. To be perfectly honest, I'm shocked you've survived as long as you have. I'm I... elated, but I'm shocked. We are very capable adventurers, thank you very much. I... Very capable adventurers. I am not doubting your capabilities individually, but, and I can't believe that I'm the one saying this, you all could do with a little more uh, teamwork than you have. I refuse to accept this criticism. <laughs> How unusual for a man. That's a we low got, blow. You got but the stick. very well. You got a stick you in your hand. You got the stick. <laughs> <laughs> Look. The reason I can manifest is because something magical is happening. I don't know what it is, but I know it's not anything inherently dangerous at the moment. Basically, what I'm saying is I can manifest now, and I don't know when the next time I will be able to is. So you might want to ask me something now. Hey, yeah, you know magic stuff. How I would sure you do. summon a moving tower? A moving tower? Um, yeah, yeah, there's a wizard with a moving tower. We gotta figure out how to bring it to us. Do you know what kind of wizard it is? A dark wizard? I think. Okay. That's what I remember being told. No, oh, that is that is fair. Um No? Not without like figuring out whatever the uh, arcane activation is for it. Hmm. All spells have an arcane activation, where, like, it, for, for some, it is, the, it, it is the thing that, once the circumstances are right, that makes it happen. So, like, for a lot of spells, it's the incantation. Like, you do the somatic gesture, and then you say the thing, and then, boom, fire out of the hands. Yeah. For very, very big spells, a lot of times there's, like, a ritual or something that you have to do, or a circumstance that you need to fulfill. We're just going to have to make a kobold desperate enough. All right, I maybe understand. let's not resort to torture. That did not go no, well for you. I said nothing about torture. Negotiating with kobolds has never gone well for you. I've only ever negotiated with one other kobold, and that yeah, wasn't and even that my fault. That was not my fault. I don't get to take credit for that. Also, also, you've been poking around in my head. Not that was well before I picked up your rock. I... Only know some things, and I am not teasing you for most of them. All right, take that as a kindness. 
I don't like that you're probing around in here. I have nothing else to do. The only well, time I get to do something is either I can stand around while all of you are being idiots, or I can be stabbed into things. Well, I noticed someone keeps casting Shadow Blade on my sword. You're welcome. No, I, well, a little warning might have been nice. What? It's cool. Uh, it's very effective, Besides, and I appreciate the, that. It's one of the few things that I can do. It's a pretty well-made sword that it can handle it as well as it does. <laughs> Look, uh, speaking of which, and well-made and secure and strong and sturdy and all that, how are you all holding up with the whole, um, uh, the glade's been destroyed and Alden is dead, and I'm not sure how I'm processing that, so I want to know how all of you little children are doing. Well, I don't appreciate you referring to us as little children. I am even... at least 200 years older than you. Well, all that, all that being said, uh, I think the party has not really grasped the reality of it. I think Alita is the only one who is truly, I don't know, understanding the depth of the situation at the moment. Though it's hard to say. We haven't really talked about it. Yeah, you're very much smooth with that whole, uh, Hey, how's it going immediately following the discovery of this enormous corpse? Well, finding out that uh, he has been basically mind-controlling Faye for a long time it was important to me to know whether or not uh, that was a complete 180 after coming out of it. My understanding is it wasn't quite that direct, but I did not get to ask the Baba Yaga any neither questions because all of you were too busy yelling. All of that being neither here nor there, uh, since I've got you... I understand that the key to the gold temple is the crown of the Boris Emperor. Yes. Did you all manage to get a hold of that at one point? No, that was one of the things that I was trying to figure out how to do when we... Drat. I was hoping you had a strategy for that. My Have you thought of a strategy over the hundreds of years you've had time to think about it? Uh, my strategy was, uh, at, that I was working on at the time was, uh, get married to him to be crowned empress, then sneak off with it in the middle of the night. That, uh, plan got foiled in, like, three ways. You've had 200 years to think about this, and your plan that you've come up with is get married to your sworn enemy. All right, hold on, hold on. Thing number one, I do not appreciate the tone. Thing number two, believe it or not, I haven't thought about how to finish the mission that was doomed 200 years ago after I was killed and put in a rock. Shockingly, it has not crossed my mind. What, did you think about the last time you needed to fold your laundry before you left home to be an adventurer? I thought about the last mission that I had with my gang that went horribly and all the different ways it could have gone better, I've run through that scenario probably a hundred different times. Yeah, but what was the job you were going outcomes. to do two jobs later? Because that is the scenario that I was in. Meh. Look, all, all of this aside, I do not know if I will get another chance to say this, Solinar. So I will, I will say it now. Ugh. I am grateful that if someone was going to awaken my rock after centuries of deadness, that not only that it was the second chance of my failure, but that it was you all specifically. I, I am glad that you are a person that exists. Well, thank you. And I appreciate everything you do for me and my sword. I do what I can. And also, it's probably accurate to say I am your sword now. I don't know that I like the implication of that. You can't pull the rock out. The, the rock and the sword are... So uh, yeah, I am the sword now. At some point, I think your spirit would be great to be able to put to rest and for my sword to just be a sword again so that you don't have to live eternally as a sword. I mean, you could always get another sword and I could be put up nicely above someone's mantle. That sounds tremendously exciting for you. Hundreds of years of being above mantles. 
Yes, but then I get to hear everybody's secrets. Hmm. I can't think of any more questions right now. That is fair. Just, I don't know, be with me for a little bit, all right? It's, it's nice to be not in the rock. Hey, tell me, tell me about your favorite day when you were alive. Astrid is going to begin explaining it, and it's going to sort of fade to black and fade into the next morning. Johannes, Koza, Boat, all of you are going to wake weirdly at the same time and with the same sensation of something looming over you. Ah! Ah! <laughs> that's a feeling I get my whole life. <laughs> well, yeah, that uh, makes sense. As you open your eyes, you see standing in the field beyond an enormous tower carved out of a blue and white stone. It's intricate. It's striking. You can see gargoyles, stone, not living, perched all along each different, what you assume is story of the tower. It reaches up high. Maybe about six stories, all told. The frogs! <laughs> it's They worked! Johannes! Johannes, the, 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 the frogs, they, they worked! Yeah, they did, buddy! They high five! High five. Sounds oh, we missed high five. On, we missed on that oh, one. Another oh, one. Oh. Huh. Closer. Wait, I think we gotta take these corks out of our palms. <laughs> Why are they in your palms? I have concerns. We're sleeping with them. Uh. There we go. <laughs> well, you never sleep with a cork in your palm? This sounds like it's like a thing to keep away, like some kind of fey creature that parents made up so their children would stay in bed at night. Wait, are you saying my parents made that up? <laughs> I never was going to be eaten at the middle of the night if I didn't keep a cork in my palm. I, I'm so sorry to be the one to tell you this. <sighs> Voice in the sky. I'm going to have to ponder on this for a while. <laughs> I'm sure you will, buddy, but you'll get it. Bo, look, the frogs worked. I was very confident in that plan from the absolute beginning. <laughs> hey, Solinar, look, the wait, Solinar. Yeah, what is Solinar's status? Solinar is going to be able to wake up, but he's going to be like weirdly sweaty and kind of uncomfortable. You'll, you'll never have one of those dreams where just so much is happening. I feel like I ran a marathon last night. I put I'm a so cork. tired. I put a cork in your palm. You need this more than me, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. It's his lucky cork. Is uh, B Badoogle? Mm. Is Badoogle here? I beg your entire pardon. I don't remember the name of the kobold. Stump Spritz? Snoop Stumpy. <laughs> Stumpy. <laughs> no, you guys named him. Uh, spritz. And by you guys, I mean me. Oh, that's right. The royal you can guys. We, can we call him <laughs> Dumpy? <laughs> Please don't call him Dumpy. That's so weird. <laughs> he, he's a friend. Uh, he's hang Chug. <laughs> is, is, is Spritz in the camp? Uh, yeah. Is he waking up or is he awake? He actually appears to have already been wake, woken up. He's uh, throwing a bunch of things into a pot on the fire. Oh, hey, what are you throwing in there, buddy? I'm, uh, I'm making soup. Yeah, you are. Man, wow, very consistent kobold behavior. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of soup is this one? Um, yes, soup is what we called it in my warren. Oh, my gosh. It's like stone soup, also known as improv soup. <laughs> yeah, yes, soup. Does it go in the soup? Yes. Yes, it does. Well, that's exciting. We got yes soup for breakfast, and then we're going to the mysterious tower that's <laughs> looming above us all. I deeply love the concept of yes soup. <laughs> you love the concept, but you won't love the flavor. <laughs> mm -hmm. Does it go in the soup? Yes. <laughs> I think that you just hit the tagline, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> There's a restaurant that only serves yes soup. Its ratings vary from day to day to day. <laughs> No, I think that's just uh, the the like one of those cheese fondue places. <laughs> <laughs> all right, the, the stirring pot. Yeah, there it is. I knew there was a name. I can remember it. 
You're all handed wooden bowls of yes soup. I, whatever you imagine the flavor profile of the soup, you are both correct and incorrect at the same time. Heck yeah. It's Schrodinger's soup. <laughs> Schrodinger's soup. Though at no point do you all feel queasy, so it did the thing that food's supposed to do, which is give you nutrients without killing you. To the tower! So is there anything that you want to do before you go into the Dark Wizard's Tower? A quick save. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's save yeah. scum. Yeah, if we could if we could do a save state now, and then if we don't like how it goes in the tower, we can load and try it again, but with different tactics. I think that'd yeah. be great. Guys. Hey folks, are you irritated at people save scumming in games like Baldur's Gate and Dragon Age? It's, well, do I have the podcast for you? I, I forgot to mention, but I also had a save before we went to bed so I can always just like prepare new spe- spells. Um, until I get the right combination of spells for this encounter. Yeah, that's that's a good idea. That's always a good idea. I save before I do my taxes, uh, just in case. Uh. <laughs> so are you guys all prepped? You're ready to go? I don't da, think da, there's da, anything da, we can da, do da, to make da, us more da. prepared. <laughs> what was that, Brandon? I couldn't hear you over the theme music. I said, I don't think there's anything we could possibly do that would make us more prepared for this. Mm-hmm. Famous yeah, last you guys words. Are really, really, really beacons of preparedness boy scouts all you guys mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, all right are we packing up camp already have we had breakfast even did i sleep in what's going on guys yes 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 soup and yes <laughs> yes soup just eat it what's you love the concept but you'll hate the flavor i oh is that did i just see several wild berries Floating. Yes. And then part of one of the game hens that we caught yesterday. Yes. Oh. Emphasis on yesterday. <laughs> I'm troubled. I'll try it, but I'm troubled. So are you guys going to bring coal with you? Yes. Oh, I, my gosh. Why all these yes or no questions? We have the answer. <laughs> so you're bringing coal and I, spritz? Yes. I think, I think we absolutely have to bring coal because if we go into the tower and then it teleports away, coal will be alone in a field in the middle of Alaria. <laughs> yeah. And that is an unacceptable outcome. I wouldn't do that to coal. Nor would I. Cole's a good boy. All right. Metagaming just like based on how much the the, the GM loves a character. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're right. We should leave Cole outside because then Alex will make it so the tower doesn't vanish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Cole won't get abandoned. You guys Genius. say that like you guys haven't set like things in motion to kill like four of my favorite characters. Hey, whoa. <laughs> Which four? Yeah, yeah, which four? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 gotta, I gotta know which safe state to go back to. <laughs> <laughs> Way further back than you want to go. Guys, uh, right. we'll be going back to um, episode 23. Um. <laughs> Ilfiel, no! <laughs> yeah, the, the, the seeds for Ilfiel's demise were sowed in episode 9. <laughs> I knew you shouldn't have I knew you shouldn't have thrown that anchor boat. <laughs> Guys, we gotta reboot the campaign, sorry. I feel I don't know is there a character that you guys would be like, nope, absolutely not. We're we're burning it this time. Maximilian. Yeah. Yeah. Maximilian, that's that's all right. That makes well, that, sense. So if you harm a hair like, on his chin, we come for you. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, like, I'm I'm ready for Solinar to die. In this adventure, like, Jesus, I, I, I'm down. Like, let's do it. So, it takes do, a lot for you, a character to be like unkillable in my book. You, and Maximilian's pretty much the, the bar. Solinar? Like, we're, do you want me to make an effort to kill him? We're walking towards the tower, and uh, the whole party <laughs> is singing like, "Ready to die, <laughs> oh, ready to die, baby, I'm ready to die." <laughs> All right, maybe maybe chill with that joke, given that a member of your party just lost everything and every home and father figure she's ever known. It's a little. Well, she's she's got her bio dad still. 
Oh, thank God. Her, her we know dead that that's beat, a healthy relationship. Her deadbeat, useless bio dad. Yeah, but she's got a really cool brother. She does have a very cool brother. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, I yes. knock on the door. The enormous door really booms with the knocking, even though Johannes's fist is comparatively small. The it's a really doors, hollow door. The doors in their entirety creak open slowly. Nope. Nope. I don't like that. Mm-mm. No. Uh, Koza walks in. I, yeah, we went over this. It's yes, Koza, soup, man. Koza, as you walk in, Ugh. you are going to have this space around you that feels welcoming and homey. Everything is made of warm, dark wood, gold, brass, glass. There are shelves and shelves and shelves of old leather bound books. You walk very, like, the first thing that happens when you walk in is you find this enormous library stacked with rows of shelves, comfortable seating, a globe, an astrolabe, and what appears to be a kettle over the fire, steam coming out of its spout, indicating that the water is prepared. You see on a table next to a large comfy armchair is... A couple of baskets filled with snacks, teas, and materials like paper and wills and ink. They are laid out almost as if for guests. Oh, this seems like such a very nice tower. I mean, Solinar's not letting Koza go in alone, so he follows. I mean, we're, the, all, we're all going into the tower. Are the doors mm-hmm. big enough that the horses and the cart can come in? Yes, but you will be tracking mud on these very nice floors. Don't don't leave that done. Oh, that, that's rude. Yeah. Too late. Do we have a tarp that we can put down? Oh, we do. We we do have a tarp. We have a tarp. I put it down. Don't do anything at it unless you really need to. <laughs> See, look, worst comes to worst, you could just have Johannes use his uh, daily breath weapon uh, for tr- tarp breathing. Mm-hmm. It's I, like, put, I lay down the yeet tarp. All right. It's, it's like a handkerchief pull, but so much more distressing. Oh, God. All right. So you lay down the tarp, the animals come in. As the second that the last of the animals comes in, the doors close behind you. Ready to die. Oh. (laughs) There. Now, if the tower moves, we won't be leaving things behind. Is there a window? There are several. Uh, What do we see out the windows? The field that you just left. Okay. Does, uh, this, does this tower have any sounds? Like, is there, like, a, a pervasive low hum that we hear? You hear the crackling of the fireplace in the library and the very, very soft whistle of the kettle. You see nothing terribly out of the ordinary, and all of the sounds that you hear are ones that you would expect of a library that contains what it has. Okay. So no, nothing indicative of a great magical engine that transports this tower from place to place? No. Okay. But you do feel distinctly the prickle of magic across your skin. Okay. So is this the place where you studied magic when you uh, were escaping your plague village? Yeah. Yes, it is. This is, he like trots over. The tea is like, and he pulls a little metal fork. Um, and by little, I mean, it's fairly large because he's using it to pull the whole kettle um, out of the fire and lay on the very charming quilted like pot rest that's been put on the table. The cups are over here and um let me see. Ooh I like peach tea. He begins preparing himself a mug of tea. Oh yeah I'm gonna do the same. Oh I I would love this I would love some too. All right. If everybody Johanna. else is getting in on it. it is- All right. As everyone begins to prepare their tea. 
I was uh, gonna say Solinar's gonna try and find a black tea, something to wake himself up a little bit. Are there any like, I don't know, class portraits or something around? <laughs> that would be so charming. No, there aren't, but that's so cute. Okay. It's just this dark wizard surrounded by kobolds and wizard hats. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. I, I love, I love uh, that you always go for the. Uh, how do I make it so cute that Alex might have to accept it? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good strategy. All right, I care about two things: the cuteness and the drama. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You guys have prepared your tea. Now we drink it. <laughs> yeah, or you guys could explore, roll some checks. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, spells. are we? You said we were in kind of like a like an entry hall. You said glass. When you were when you said glass, were you talking about like display cases? Yes. Solonar is going to check out what's inside some of these display yeah, cases. Yeah, like what kind of uh, what, what what animes are the figures from? <laughs> there are many <laughs> waifu figures. Um, There's a lot of a lot of people wearing bunny suits and bathing suits here. I don't. So what the go, hell's going on there? So you go to the glass cases. Many of them contain tomes that look to be encased due to their fragility. You also see a couple of artifacts here and there, some that are faintly glowing, that appear to be of various kinds of cursed. Do they have labels? How How do they appear to be various kinds of cursed? Yeah. Well, some of them are like... uh a pendant that appears to be made from a shrunken fairy skull that is visibly emanating black and green Icarus light. Oh, no. So it's that, like, anime, like, dark aura is, like, emanating yes. well, from everything? <laughs> well, y- everything you know how is it Inuyasha is. miasma levels. <laughs> you, you know how it is, like, sometimes you get a figure and it's just, like, deeply cursed. Yeah. So that's that's what I mean. Some of them appear to have sort of a stuttering purple energy that comes off of them that, while looking very different from the Icarus light of the skull necklace, does seem to have a similar sinister air to it. Yeah, I don't I don't think we should touch anything that's in any of these cases. This all, this all seems like bad news. I don't know, maybe maybe you could take something and just, you know, if you're wearing like lead gloves or something like that, you could handle it and then toss it at somebody who you needed to curse. Some curses go through metal and I'm not taking that chance. You want to take that chance. You go right ahead, buddy. But lead is the like densest the metal. Option. The safer option is to just cast a curse yourself. If we had a bag of holding and could just tip it in there. <laughs> then we could just <laughs> dump it out on top of somebody. <laughs> Cut a hole in the bottom of the bag of holding, use it like a sling. Are there any other doors <laughs> around? Roll perception for me. Um, that is going to be... Um, oh, wow. Uh, 26. Good lord. Good god. So that is going to be enough <laughs> that you're going to find a hidden staircase behind one of the bookshelves. You're basically like going through casually, you pull one of the books and it's one of those old timey book pull levers. The bookcase itself is going to descend into the floor, revealing the staircase upwards. Oh. 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 Oh, I wasn't expecting this. Solonar looks up from one of the cursed objects that he's just been like staring at as it stares back into him, as he stares into it as it stares back into him. Uh, what? What? What what are you uh, expecting? What? A uh, uh, staircase. Oh. Staring case. Yeah. I, um... I'm gonna, I'm gonna step away from this. What, what did you... What? What did you find, Koza? The... The... I... Uh, this book looked interesting. Um... It was a little book about different types of tea. I was going to read it, but it's actually just a, a switch to open a staircase. Oh, neat. Well spotted. Should I go up? I I think we should go thank our host for the lovely cup of tea. Oh. And see about stopping them from creating more rackets. How wide is the staircase? Um... 
probably about the width of your average hallway. Like, your average domestic hallway. So not big enough for the cart. No, not large enough for the <laughs> <No>. cart. <laughs> well, I thought it might have been like a Got grand it. southern can, staircase or something. Can you no, imagine? It's, it's a normal hidden behind books staircase. Can you imagine trying to roll a fully loaded cart up a staircase? Sounds like a nightmare. We'd figure it out. Solonar is a strength 10. There's only so much he can do. <laughs> All right, let's check this out. And Solonar starts up the stairs with his tea in hand, <laughs> holding it what? like a like a candle <laughs> as he walks <laughs> up the stairs. Like he's a character in a Dickens novel. All right, so you're going to come up, and you're going to come across a set of doors that doesn't seem to match the aesthetic and vibe of the downstairs. These doors are. The only word you can really think of is sterile. They're very sparse. They're very brutish. There's not much detail. There's just this emotionless clinical nature to them. That's the only set of doors? Mm -hmm. that's, that's the set of doors that this staircase leads up to. Solonar takes a deep breath and is like, oh, Okay. And he knocks on the sterile doors. Your knocks echo, but nothing responds. Be careful, Solonar. <laughs> no <laughs> kidding, boat. <laughs> well, uh, a stair, you, buddy. A there, staircase like a led to a sterile door. Who knows what else could be on the other side of it? Hysterical. Uh, is there like a keyhole or something? Mm -mm. Nothing like that? Nope. Just, just door handles. Yep. Is there a little bit of a gap at the bottom of the door? Or the middle of the door? There is a little bit of a gap at the bottom. Like, could, could a, 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 a agile little ferret flatten himself out just enough to squeeze through <laughs> that little gap in the door? I don't think a ferret would, but a little mouse might. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, but what if, what if it was a ferret? <laughs> are the Alex door is... hinges visible from from the outside of the door they are not okay Alex is trying to keep you from turning into a ferret because she knows that once you do that's the whole rest of the episode <laughs> and maybe the following and maybe the following yeah but I want only one thing <laughs> I just want one thing uh Solonar's gonna Freak the door open just a little bit. Just the the teeniest, tiniest amount to see if he can look through it for any mechanisms for traps. Roll perception. Nine. Oh, wait. Nope, it's nine. <laughs> All right. You look around and you see no evidence of traps. The large room that is behind these doors appears to be some form of laboratory. Tables scatter the space covered in books, glass apparatus, and suspiciously organic looking specimen bits. Any uh, any large red buttons that we would want to be keeping Dee Dee away from? Um, <laughs> not that you can see. Okay. Uh, boo. You, she's pronounced it laboratory. Yeah. I, was, I couldn't. Not. I laughed. I laughed and I still booed you. <laughs> Uh, okay. Solonar's gonna go ahead and open the door. Not like, not like swinging it open hard, but like slowly open the door and kind of pop his head inside. Be like, hello? Your voice echoes, but nothing responds. I am confused and concerned that we might be the only people inside this building right now. <laughs> Spritz, does the owner of the tower frequently go off on jaunts out into the wilderness around the tower, leaving no one and nothing inside guarding it? I've never been up here. What? I've never been up here. I've only ever been downstairs. What, didn't you train with this wizard for, like, some time? I, he had tea with me and taught me some magic. But it wasn't up here. It wasn't this weird, smelly room. But oh, I get it. You'd come into the tower, 
and he would have tea with you, and then he'd have you leave out the front door uh-huh. when you when you all were done having tea. Well, and he taught me magic, but yes. Okay, all right. That that makes a little more sense. I'm still a little confused, but I'm a little less confused than I was. But he made a point that he never, ever, ever, ever leaves the tower ever. Never, ever, ever? Never, ever, ever, ever. So this is very weird, is what you're telling me. And we should be concerned. He might be upstairs. What do you, what do you mean upstairs? We are upstairs. Um, Cause is going to... So th- this is a spooky room, right? Like we're getting the chills in here. Would you, Full-on spoops. Would you describe us as as shook? I'm... Both the Hibblies and the Ghiblies? Well, it might be worthwhile to roll perception, detect any presences, see if there's detect any magic. Spook. Well, I rolled... A... I use detect spoop. I rolled 27 on detect spoop. Um, are you guys... Is one of you casting, like, detect good like good and evil, or... And, yeah, that's me. By detect spoop, I mean perception. All right, so, Johannes. How many there, spoops? There are going to be three distinct smells that you can smell from casting this spell. Say that a couple of times fast. The You're three things s- that you can detect are arcane, which you'd expect, infernal, and undead. Um, and uh, is there is there some, some strong evil? Is there strong evil on this? You don't detect malevolence where you are. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. I just realized okay. that, thank you for the reminder. I would have brought my um zombies with me too. Um so they're chilling downstairs with the the animals. Yeah, if you could they're watch uh, a load, call. If, if you could load that <laughs> sta- save state so we can make sure that the they're uh... Yeah. The... Thank God you guys got your corpsey babysitters. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um I'm uh, y- there's uh two things that Three are important dead here. Dead man and a baby. <laughs> important things that are here. Uh uh one, uh, uh everything's normal except for two, it's not. There's undead uh smells in the air which are distinctly evil. Well, I mean undead are evil. I don't know if they hey. are in them individually. Are you about you to just to say, say undead are evil? Yeah, is this about the living mushrooms that you have well, animating corpses? I, um, I just do, that is a lot speaking. That's it. Do you think I'm evil? Sorry, yeah. Do you think I'm evil? Why would I think that? Well, he just said, "Oh, so you're not undead." Well, but my friends are undead. Are they? Are oh. Do they count uh, as friends if they're bound to you in eternal servitude? Do they count as so, bound to him in eternal <laughs> servitude if they're if they're mushrooms? I mean, yeah. You they're gonna what? obey everything he says. I never really thought about whether or not Koza considers I guess he considers the mushrooms not undead. So, yeah, they're so, alive. so they're we, we should rewind. Rewind. <laughs> they're literally <laughs> the opposite. They feast Load that on. safe state. <laughs> yeah. Load previous safe state. Undead, which are distinctly evil, and then also <laughs> infernal. Yeah, it's terrible that so there's got... undead here. Who could ever do such a terrible, evil thing as create undead? Yeah, this we need to get this under control. I don't know where this infernal is coming from, but I don't like it. I'm going to try to. I'm going to cast um, pass without a trace from the staff. Um, so that we're all a little bit sneakier. Um, all right. And then I'm going to, I'm going to tiptoe up the next flight of stairs. All right. Beedy, beedy, you're just gonna, you're beedy, just gonna creep on beedy. up. Oh yeah, I'm creeping. <laughs> Hard creeping. Oh, roll did, a did dexterity I, saving throw. So I, I did forget to resolve my like um, perception from earlier. You did, uh, and I'm very excited for you to roll that uh, okay. that check for me, that dexterity saving That's throw. Cool. Go ahead and roll that for me while I resolve the perception. Um, so you're able to see mostly what I described earlier. You're also able to see that some of the tables contain things like chemistry equipment, syringes, scalpels, chemicals. Um, and you find, notably, and I will let you retcon that you took this, uh, two greater healing potions. 
Along the walls are diagrams of various animals and what would be inside of them were you to dissect them. A lot of, like, anatomical diagrams. There's a lot of, like, notes scribbled in the margin that are, in fact, written in Infernal. I I do find some of the diagrams interesting in terms of seeing, like, oh, this is what my mushrooms are like, what what the funguses I introduced to these corpses are interacting with to, like, allow them to, to move and animate. Um, does it... I just kind of take a bit, bit of mental note, but I'm also kind of like, I, I don't know, are these like upsetting or does it feel like a medical textbook? It feels like a medical textbook. Okay. There isn't like any like, yes, and the liver leaks out of the eye. Like there's nothing like really gross or weird. Okay. It's just. It's not like, oh, this is it, how a liver works. And also here's my recipe for eating human liver. No. Okay. Well, you don't speak well. infernal. <laughs> so you don't know what the notes <laughs> scribbled in the margins say. but. None of the diagrams that you see give the appearance of anything culinary. Okay. Can anybody read this stuff? Because uh, it is well beyond my knowledge. Mm, let me see it. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, I see what they're saying here. Okay, nope, I can't read it. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, so that deck saving throw? Oh, where did I put my... I got a 17. So as you're going to go up the stairs, you're going to hear a soft click. You're going to hit the deck and... Um, so instead of like you're hitting go- the deck, I immediately turn into a ferret. All right, wonderful. You turn into a ferret, but you are going to still take five damage. You turn into a ferret, which hits the deck. From the spouts of flame that shoot from the ceiling and walls along the staircase. As you turn into a ferret, you feel the stair that you had stepped on that activated this pop up a little bit. Your weight no longer compressing it. D&D ferret stat block. (laughs) Does a ferret have more HP than a villager? Let's find out together. <laughs> Guys, I'm so sad. <laughs> I, <laughs> I Yep, okay. yep, that happens. <laughs> no, but wait, so what if... No. No, you used your wild shape and then you got knocked out of your wild shape. <laughs> yeah. Classic. Classic. So, yeah, so I get too I, close to the sun. I get knocked out. I get turned into a cooked little ferret f- who falls like <laughs> through the through the sky back onto the tr- to the step that was trapped. Does this trigger There's the a- trap again? No, it okay. Because I, I love- <laughs> torch him again, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Hit him with a love- stick. So the way I, I- that you the way that you fall and you're only like half on the stair, so it's not your full weight. Okay. I love the image of uh, Koza Ferret falls and gets torched at the same time. And so it's just this like this torched ferret lays on the step for a moment and just like weakly reaches up <laughs> towards the ceiling and then poof and it's Koza full body laying on the floor reaching up towards the ceiling like no. <laughs> some thank yous I would like to say to the Patreon to make this show possible and I want to give each of y'all a mushroom Captain Envy you are the beautiful Rusula Jedros Gaming the horse mushroom Domo Voy how could you be anything other than the inside out Agaric. Elizabeth Lee, you're the the, the, the giant puffball. Jeff Buck, absolutely you are the livid 
in Toloma. Thank you all so much. Y'all, I've got tremendous news. I was looking at my character sheet and I haven't updated the pluses for anything since we got a new uh proficiency i thought you were about to say i've got tremendous news and then turn into a ferret (laughs) look at at this ferret time let's go